Mount Ararat in Turkey has been related to Noah's Ark in a series of biblical manuscripts, but everything seemed irrelevant because it could not be proven. However, an American researcher seems to have shown that the archaeological site deep in the mountain is, in fact, Noah's Ark. How it was discovered, in 1965, a captain of the Turkish army, Lhan Durapiner, found a strange object while examining aerial images of Turkey. First photo of an expedition that came to examine the structure, probably in 1959. That year the army took aerial photographs of the area to create more detailed maps and the captain noticed a strange shape on the slopes of Mount Ararat. He decided to send the negatives to a renowned aerial photography expert, Dr. Brandenberger, of Ohio State University, USA. After receiving the photographs, Brandenberger examined them carefully and came to the following conclusion, I do not have any I doubt that this object is a boat. Throughout my career, I have never seen an object like this in a stereo photo. In 1960 an image was published in the journal Life under the title of Noah's Ark. That same year a group of Americans accompanied Captain Durapiner to the site during a day and a half. They expected to find artifacts on the surface or something indisputably related to a vessel of some kind. They did some digging in the area, but found nothing conclusive and announced to the anxiously awaited world that it seemed to be a natural formation. But 17 years later another expedition was launched. Ancient underground city built by extraterrestrials protected humanity from a global catastrophe in 1977 Ron Wyatt visited the site. Obtaining official permission, Ron and others conducted deeper investigations over a period of several years. They used metal detection equipment, subsurface radar explorations and chemical analysis, real science, and their results were surprising. The evidence was undeniable. This was Noah's Ark. The first part of the analysis was to examine the object and take its measurements. The shape looked like the hull of a ship. One end was pointed as expected from the bow down, D and the opposite end was blunt like a stern. The distance from the bow to the stern was 515 feet, or exactly 300 Egyptian elbows. The average width was 50 cubits. These were the exact measurements mentioned in the Bible. On the starboard side, right, near the stern were four vertical protrusions protruding from the mud B, at regular intervals, were determined to be the ribs of the hull. In front of these, on the port side, a single rib A protruding from the mud. You can see its curved shape very clearly. Around him are more ribs, still buried largely in the mud, but visible on closer inspection. Remember that this object, if it is the Ark, is extremely ancient. The wood has become petrified. Organic matter has been replaced by minerals from the earth. Only the shapes and footprints of the original wood remain. From the position of the object in the middle of an obvious mud flow, it is obvious that the object slid more than a kilometer from its original location. Geologists believe that originally it was more than 300 meters higher in the mountain and enclosed in a hardened mud shell. They think that an earthquake in 1948 cracked the clay peel and revealed the structure. This is confirmed by the stories of the surrounding villagers who talk about their sudden appearance around that time. The Book of Giants 2000, year old describes how Nephilim were wiped biblical stories of the Ark describe it as having up to six levels. The assumed form of the Ark seems coherent with the protuberant sea in the center of the object. In fact, although most people think of the Ark as rectangular, it only applies to the upper decks. The elegant shape of the hull is necessary to allow the huge boat to remain stable in the water and survive the tremendous waves. Radar scans revealed that the structure is under the hardened mud. The symmetry and logical placement of these objects shows that this is unmistakably a man-made structure. These data do not represent the natural geology, they are structures made by the man, these reflections seem too periodic, too periodic to be random in that type of natural space. Ron Wyatt of the SIR imaging team using the GPR, Ron Wyatt discovered an open cavity on the starboard side. 
He used an improvised drill to take samples from the base inside this cavity and retrieved several very interesting objects. Below you can see the artifacts that were sent for laboratory analysis. To the left is the whole sea below, followed by what turned out to be petrified animal dung, then a petrified horn and finally a piece of cat hair. Even more amazing artifacts were found, perhaps the most significant finding of the ark itself is a piece of petrified wood down to the left. When it was first discovered, it appeared to be a large beam. But upon closer examination it is actually three pieces of planks that have been laminated along with some kind of organic glue. This is the same technology used in modern plywood. Lamination makes the total strength of the wood much greater than the combined strength of the parts. This suggests a knowledge of construction far beyond what we knew existed in the ancient world. Tests performed by Galbraith Labs in Knoxville, Tennessee, USA showed that the sample contained more than 0.7% of organic carbon, consistent with fossilized wood. The sample was once living matter. The examination revealed that there was glue oozing in the layers. The exterior of the wood appears to have been coated with bitumen. Even more surprising were laboratory analyzes that not only revealed that the petrified wood contained carbon, proving that it was once wood, but that there were iron nails embedded in the wood. The Iron Age is usually placed in 1200 to 1000 BC, however, we have iron nails that were used in this extremely old building. The most surprising finding was discovered with sensitive metal detectors. The team located large disc-shaped rivets. From the simple observation of the metal it was possible to see where the rivet had been hammered after having been inserted through a hole. If the rivets used in the old construction do not impress you, this will surely do. An analysis of the metal used to make the rivets revealed that they were a combination of iron, 8.38%, aluminum, 8.35%, and titanium, 1.59%. Remember that these trace metals have survived petrification and therefore do not indicate the exact content in the original material. We know that aluminum was incorporated in the metal mixture because it does not exist in metallic form in nature. This implies an extremely advanced knowledge of metallurgy and engineering. The characteristics of an iron-aluminum alloy have been investigated in the Russian Chemical Bulletin, 2005, and reveal that this alloy forms a thin film of aluminum oxide that protects the material from oxidation and corrosion. The addition of titanium would provide increased strength. This seems to have worked. The rivets have survived since antiquity. The surrounding area has more surprises, several miles from the location of the Ark, huge stones were discovered, some standing, while others lay on the ground. These stones, which weigh many tons, have holes carved into them. Scientists have determined that they were anchors and the holes could have been attached to a ship with hemp rope. The addition of titanium would provide increased strength. This seems to have worked. The rivets have survived since antiquity. Often these stones had crosses carved in them, for centuries when the pilgrims made the trip to visit the Ark. Yes, the Ark was well known in the Middle Ages and even before. And its location was recorded in many historical documents. And the Ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat, and the waters continually diminished until the tenth month, in the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the mountain tops views. Genesis 8, 4-5 The Epic of Gilgamesh, 650 BC, gives to M.T. Nisir as the landing place of the Ark. The local name for the city where the Ark was found is Nassar. The annals of ashur nasirpal II of Assyria, 833 to 859 BC, place it to the south of the river Zab, correct. Theophilus of Antioch, 115 to 185 AD, said that the Ark could be seen in its day in the Arabian mountains. The later fathers of the church also mentioned the Ark until the middle of the 7th century. In the 13th century, Willem, a traveler, first declared that Mount Macy's was the place of the Ark, present Mount Ararat. 
The Geography of Ptolemy, 1548, mentions the mountains of Armenia as the landing place. So does the traveler Nicholas de Nicolay, 1558. The huge anchors would have been suspended from the keel of the boat. This was a common practice among ancient sailors to stabilize a heavy ship and ensure that the bow always faces the looming waves. A heavy ship, like the Ark, could be easily capsized by a wave approaching from the side. This is further proof that Noah's Ark was a reality and that it has in fact been found in Turkey. After Noah's Ark rested, when Dr. Brandenburger examined and expanded the foreign object photographs in Turkey, he also saw hundreds of ancient foundations in the region, suggesting that this might have been the first city established after the flood, as described in the Bible. Now its settlement spread from Mesha as you go to Safar, the mountainous region to the east. Genesis 1030 archaeological teams have found many ancient ruins and tombs. Many human ribs have been excavated and sent to laboratories for analysis. In the middle of this supposed first city of Noah, there is an unusual and prominent structure, about 10 feet in diameter, which many believe is the altar on which Noah made his first sacrifice. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings upon the altar. Genesis 8:20. There is substantial evidence that something extremely important, Noah's Ark, has been found. However, has been ignored by historians and the media. Perhaps it is because the advanced technology discovered in the Ark suggests that Sumerian legends, Gilgamesh's epic, and other ancient writings might be correct when they speak of an alien connection. The plural of God, Elohim, is even used in Genesis. Who were these gods and how they traveled on earth and interacted with the humans of the time? An archaeologist, Professor Octabelli said, the search team has made the greatest discovery in the history of Noah's Ark. This finding is very important, the largest so far. On Mount Ararat, human settlements have never reached 3,500 m. Mount Ararat is a holy place and has rich historical accounts of the Noah's Ark on MT. Many people have searched for the mountain of the Holy Ark. But this time this is the first serious discovery, where the team found the structure of wood under the ice, he argued.